I uh, was the man asked to pray at the Ontario Prayer Breakfast a few months ago, and so I was up there on the main uh, dais with uh, some worthy people, and one of them was the speaker, Dr. Jane Philpott. And I've been at a lot of these events over the years, and I told Jane afterwards, uh, hers was the best speech I'd ever heard at an event like this, and I really, I really mean it. She's, she's the chief of the Department of Family Medicine at Markham Stouffville Hospital and assistant professor at the, in the University of Toronto's Department of Family and Community Medicine. She's also lead physician of the Health for All Family Health Team in Markham, Ontario, which is uh, located with the uh, Markham Family Medicine Teaching Unit. Uh, she studied medicine at the University of Western Ontario. She's completed a family medicine residency at the University of Ottawa and a tropical medicine fellowship in Toronto. And recently, she completed a master's in public health at the University of Toronto, as if you don't have enough to do. And she also worked with SIM Canada in the Niger Republic, West Africa, from 89 to 98, where she practiced general medicine, developed a training program for village health workers, and she's a founder of the Give a Day to World AIDS movement, which started in 2004 as a way to engage Canadians in responding to HIV. Since 2004, uh, Give a Day has grown in the medical, legal, and business communities and has raised over $3.5 million to help those affected by HIV in Africa. She is the family medicine lead in the Toronto Addis Ababa Academic Collaboration. In this capacity, she's helped colleagues at Addis Ababa University to develop the first training program for family medicine in Ethiopia, which is scheduled to begin in September. And Dr. Philpott and her husband have four children. Now, this is the first time in years I've put an introduction on the, the teleprompter. But it, uh, there was so much to say about you, and there's much more that could be said, Jane. Welcome. Thank you so much. I should maybe call you Dr. Jane, but... Uh, you can call J me almost whatever you like. Jane's cool? <laughs> okay. Now, we've got so much to talk about, but I, I, I'd like you to tell me, first of all, about your, your interest in um, medicine and faith. Uh, you were uh, basically a medical missionary for about nine years in Niger, right? That's right. How is it that you went there in the first place? Well, I had the privilege of uh, working in East Africa during my medical school training. I was actually quite inspired by a number of my colleagues in medical school who had worked internationally, and I had the opportunity to work in Kenya. And uh, it was a real eye-opener for me, as it often is for people when they work in a lower-resourced setting. And it, it made me aware that my uh, medical training was a great opportunity for me to be able to serve in a very practical way uh, people who were in need both physically, spiritually, emotionally, socially in many ways. And you know, whether we work as physicians here at home or whether we work in an international setting, uh, it's all about healing and helping people to live more meaningful and productive and, and uh, healthy lives. And, I'm happy to be able to be part of that. When, when, you, when you were a student and you decided to pursue medicine, uh, did you have this in mind that you would like to be a medical missionary or has all this happened to you kind of come as a surprise? You know, uh, as you know, God just opens doors bit by bit to mm. see what he has in mind for us to do in our lives. And, uh, you know, the setting actually to me is secondary. It's really important uh, that we do what we're supposed to do each day of our lives. And so I had the opportunity to realize that there were an extraordinary number of needs, as I say, in countries like uh, Kenya, where I first worked in Africa. And then we had the, uh, the privilege of working in West Africa for almost a decade. When you see the physical needs and the social needs in a place like that and realize that you have some skill set, you have some uh, opportunity that you've been given in life that might be able to help others effectively, uh, it was just uh, one of those, those callings. You know, I, I know a lot about Africa, as you know. I spent a lot of my time there. I just got back from Malawi last mm -hmm. week. Uh, Africa is very adversarial. There's a lot about Africa that can threaten one's life uh, mm -hmm. in terms of malaria, in terms of other kinds of afflictions, illnesses, um, diseases. Uh, you and your husband experienced a great loss yourself while you were there. Tell us about that. Well, we, uh, we knew that when we went that we were prepared uh, to put everything on the line for our work as I try to do every day to say, you know, God, you gave me another day, let me use it for how you need to. Um, and so when we went, we went with our firstborn daughter, little Emily, and uh, when we moved over to West Africa, she was uh, not even a year old. 
Um, about a year and a half later, while we were doing language study, uh, she um, became very ill one day, woke up one morning actually with fever and vomiting. And I realized uh, fairly soon after that that she had an illness called meningococcemia, uh, which is one of the uh, most rapidly fatal infections uh, known, uh, and it, particularly in children. Uh, she, we were not able to get her to medical attention early enough, and she actually uh, passed away while we were driving to the closest hospital. Um, and uh, it was it was the worst day of my life. Yeah. Um, and yet, and you know, I I'm thankful that I'm going to get to see Emily again someday. Yeah. Um, but God um, can always help us to find uh, a reason for things like that happening to us. I am absolutely not the only mother in the world who's yeah. lost a child. In fact, uh, when at the time that we lived in uh, Niger the under five's mortality rate was about 270 children out of every thousand children would not reach the age of five. Wow. It's shocking. It's better than that now, thankfully, but still I think it's sitting around 14% of children in Niger don't reach the age of five. That is so wrong. Mm. We have to, all of us do our part, and it's not just doctors who can do something, um, but we all need to do our part to see that that's not the kind of world we live in. How many years ago was this that uh, Emily this, died? Well, this is actually 20 years ago 20 now, years so it's ago. a long time ago. Um, it's still very fresh when yeah. I think about it. Uh, but again, I'm just thankful that God has given me the opportunity to be able to do something so that other mothers won't have to go through what I had to go through. And, you know, there's so much that we can do uh, in order that more children can be able to live a long and healthy life. Uh, tell me about give... Uh, a day to HIV. Uh, was this your idea? Um, I had a big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is it, the idea is that people give a day's wages? Uh, that's the challenge. Yeah. So this started actually at the hospital that I work at, Markham Stovall yeah. Hospital yeah. north of Toronto. Yeah. And um, I had, of course, having worked in Africa for a, a decade, was very um, challenged by the HIV pandemic, and I still am. It's something that all Canadians need to be involved in, but I was looking for ways to be able to help people figure out what they could do because we often feel helpless in the face of such massive challenges. Mm -hmm. um, so the doctors at my hospital invited me to give a speech at a dinner and I decided to talk about HIV in Africa and this was 2004. And even among doctors, you know, the, there, it's not always on our minds. We often think that, you know, AIDS is over. It's absolutely not over. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to my colleagues and I said, you know, gave them an update on the pandemic. And then I said, okay, what are doctors going to do? We're not going to have a bake sale. Why don't, what could we do that would be easy? I said, you know what? World AIDS Day is coming up on December 1st. Why don't you each get out your checkbooks right now or your credit cards? Why don't you figure out what you're going to make on one day, World AIDS Day? Could you on that day... If I were to ask you on that day, could you give up that day so that people in the world living with HIV could, uh, could be brought relief? Would you do that? We all would, right? We'd all give a day if we could. So their practical way of giving a day is to give one day's pay to an organization that they know will use the money well in the fight against HIV. Hmm. Great idea. And it's uh, been very successful. I'm delighted. We've yeah. uh, we we've raised about uh, th just over three and a half million dollars. Yeah. We recommend a couple of great Canadian organizations, but yeah. I always say, you know, if you know an, an organization that uh, will use your money well, then uh, please consider yeah. giving one day. Yeah. Um, you've got a, a pretty significant job um, at at the, at the hospital. Uh, is most of your work now administrative? No, I still see patients about half the time. Yeah. Half-time clinical and half-time administrative leadership. And you're also teaching. We teach family medicine residents, yes. Yeah. So you've got a lot on your plate. You also have four children. I how do. do. How do you balance this, this um, major professional involvement with uh, being a mom of four kids? Well, the first thing is I have possibly the world's best husband. Oh, ah, well, there you go. <laughs> That's a big help. That's a huge help. Yeah. Um, so uh, everything that we do, we do together. He's a fantastic dad for our kids. And um, I just wake up each morning and, you know, face what opportunities I get to do. And I just work all out till I crash into bed at night. And I have an awesome team that works with me at the hospital. Um, there's, you know, everything that I've been able to, uh, to help out with, I haven't done any of it alone. Tell you what, Addis Ababa. Oh, 
Addis Ababa mm -hmm. is a fantastic city, first of all. It's the capital city of yeah. Ethiopia. Yeah. And a few years ago, I was invited to go to Addis Ababa um, as a representative of the University of Toronto to help start a family medicine residency program. You know, uh, Addis Ababa, ha or the country of Ethiopia, has one of the worst situations yeah. in terms of health workers. You know that in that country, there are over 80 million people in the country there are about 2,000 doctors. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. 2,000 doctors and 80 million people? Yeah. Yeah. So they've got a very ambitious Minister of Health who is working very, very hard to train more doctors and then to train, have more specialty programs in the country so that doctors don't have to leave the country to get their education. And so they invited us to come and I got to be a big part of that in helping them to develop a brand new program to train family doctors. How did they connect with you? How did they know about you? Uh, a, a fabulous psychiatrist named Dr. Claire Payne in Toronto had helped start a similar program for psychiatrists there and she and I met one another and she knew I'd worked in Africa and she said would you like to come along and, and see if you can help and uh, it's been a massive privilege. I just I can't say enough about how happy I am to be part of that. Have you encountered the Kelly Highwood Church there? I have, yeah, yes. Fantastic yeah. church. I think it may be the biggest church in the world. I, the last time I was with them uh, they had seven million members. I mean, it's extraordinary. I couldn't couldn't oh. believe it. Uh, this brings up a, a really delicate issue, but it really, uh, when I was first uh, confronted with it in Ethiopia, I was blown away by it. Female circumcision. Hmm. Uh, I was told by one doctor there that about 80%, if not, if not more, of the young girls in Ethiopia undergo this uh, horrific procedure. I, is that the case? Well, I, it, I'm not an expert in yeah. that area. Um, there are certainly parts of the country and parts of many other countries where it's still a common cultural practice. And, and there's also a marvelous little clinic there in Addis Ababa that deals with uh, uh, women who have... Um, the fistula hospital. With, uh, had, yeah, the fistula hospital yeah. who, because, uh, is it because they've, they've born children went far before they were old enough really to do so and so they have interior uh, tearing and mm. horrible things happen? Yeah. There, there's a lot to be done. There's so much that can be prevented though, right? So I'm, the Fistula Hospital is an extraordinary place. Yeah. And yet, being a family doctor, I'm all about prevention yeah. and all about helping women not have to go through horrendous labor experiences and not having you know, traumatic deliveries. So there's so much that can be done to prevent those kinds of tragedies. The thing about Addis is it looks really good from the street, but you get behind the, the, the buildings along the street and there's just a warren of sorrow and poverty there that, uh, is uh, overwhelming. Well, the only thing that I can say about Ethiopia, though, is that the people are extraordinary. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, what, what you kind of get to look past the, uh, the very difficult uh, socioeconomic conditions there and realize that people are all the same. And some of my greatest friends in the world are my Ethiopian friends. And do you, with your hands when you're there? I sure do, <laughs> and I love it. I love it. We've got a couple of pictures here that uh, you brought along. Let's, let's take a look at them, and you can tell us uh, what we're looking at. Uh, this this is this this is from Addis obviously. This was just taken this May when yeah. I was there. We had a conference about family medicine program, and these are many of my terrific colleagues there. Many of them are senior faculty members, people that could go anywhere in the world and make many, many times as much money as they're making in Ethiopia, they are committed to stay in that country and to build up the infrastructure of their country. And would these in, in the main be men and women of faith? Uh, many of them are. Yeah. They, they sure are. You know, yeah. uh, Christianity is very strong in Ethiopia. Yeah. Very. And, and here's, a, here's a shot of uh, some uh, well-known Ontario leaders. Who are we looking at here? That's right. So on the left, you've got Dr. Cal Gutkin, and he is the uh, CEO of the College of Family Physicians. I hope uh, that many people know that the next person is Minister Matthews. Deb Matthews mm -hmm. is our Minister of Health right. here in Ontario. Then you see myself, right. and then after me, you'll see Dean Catherine Whiteside. Dr. Catherine Whiteside is the dean of the largest medical school in our country. Mm -hmm. After her, you see Dr. Helena Jaksik, mm -hmm. who is the MPP in Markham, mm -hmm. uh, where we were having opening our clinic. And then you see Ms. Uh, Janet at Bede, who is the CEO of Markham Stovall Hospital. Look huh. at those great people. I get. That's how I get to do yeah, stuff, because yeah. I work with great people like well, that. Well, I mean, terrific people, and they're obviously uh, very supportive of what you're doing. We have just about a minute left. Um, do you see yourself doing what you're doing for the rest of your life, or do you have unfulfilled dreams? <laughs> oh, I have a few dreams hidden yeah. away. That yeah. I, yeah, I'm what, what would you say is the, <laughs> the one thing you hope you can accomplish before you oh hang it gosh. up? You know what? Um, I just want every day to, uh, my favorite Bible verse is from the book of Micah, and it says that, you know, God's shown us what, what uh, we should do, and that's to, to do justice, yeah. to seek justice, yeah. 
to love kindness and to walk humbly with yeah. God. And every day that's what I hope I can do. Well, you're a terrific model. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, young people watching this interview who are saying, I'd like to be just like Jane Philpott. Well, why not? Just get out there and uh, make your life count. It really can make a difference. 